life as we know it started in the ocean? Atmosphere-ocean interactions is the buzzword inside the climate science community because it's not a chicken and egg. They both work together. The critical knowledge we need to better understand global warming right now is to put large investments into understanding the atmospheric ocean coupling. Our planet is two-thirds water. Our data sources are primarily from the skin of the ocean surface. There needs to be a monumental effort in the next decade to build an in situ monitoring system for studying the ocean weather, the biology of the ocean, so that we can actually build the models that are required to better understand what is happening now on this planet, what will happen 10 years, 50 years, and 100 years from now. When I drive home tonight, some carbon dioxide is going to come out of the tailpipe of my scooter and uh, it will start spreading through the atmosphere. Probably within weeks, the air that contains that excess carbon dioxide will waft over the ocean somewhere and start going into the oceans. Within a year or two, more or less, the whole surface ocean will feel that excess carbon dioxide that I added to the atmosphere. We are now becoming a major player in the carbon cycle. How much carbon is moving around the, the planet? And most of that's happening in the atmosphere in the upper ocean. We put out 8 billion tons of carbon as CO2 mainly that is absorbed by the ocean. So one of the pathways for the CO2 molecule is that it comes into the ocean, reacts with water, forms carbonic acid, and, and then a proton comes off and attacks this building block that the coral needs to grow or other shellfish need to grow. I think there's a question with climate change generally that it looks like if we don't stop producing devices that emit carbon dioxide very soon, that we're going to lose Arctic ecosystems, we're going to lose coral reefs. And I think it's a real question, are these just the first two systems that we know about? All the CO2 we're putting into the atmosphere, it looks like about 30 to 40 percent immediately goes into the ocean. The deep ocean breathes. Deep ocean waters connect to the surface and connect to the atmosphere only in the polar regions. Air doesn't store much heat. You know, where heat gets stored on the planet right now is in the ocean. The Earth has been hot before. It was hot when the dinosaurs were around. But the only time that chemistry changed as radically as we might do this century are at times of great mass extinctions. Temperature and productivity play a key role in why an animal moves north or south. As Earth warms, these factors are going to change. How it will influence migrations, we're just learning. When we look at what we see today and compare it to what we saw when we first started making these measurements, we can say things have changed. Things really have changed in terms of the vertical distribution patterns of animals, probably influenced by temperature, stratification, and oxygen concentration. As we lose species that might be important intermediate prey, it's going to start to destabilize food webs. What happens with the impact of, say, the loss of coral reef and habitat is that the less fish we're seeing, that's all exacerbated by overfishing as well and a lack of control. The less fish we're seeing means people are doing other things, they're going out further, and it's, it's not getting better. The immediate threat that people are concerned about is rising sea levels and, of course, the warming of the ocean. Also, the, with rising sea levels, the reality uh, with many of our communities now settled on the shorelines. 
As we start warming the oceans, not only do they expand and make the sea level rise, but when it gets warmer, it melts Greenland, which is now melting faster than anybody's been able to record or even understand. And we're worried about meters of sea level rise in centuries associated with the fact that we've been messing with the oceans in a way where it's going to feed back on the land, which is going to run off and change the height of the oceans and maybe force billions of human beings to abandon trillions of dollars of infrastructure to have to move inland. I think the only thing we know now is it's going to be a different world. It's going to be a different ocean, and I can't tell you how different it's going to be. Mm -hmm.